Hey coders and welcome to episode 6 of our pandas playlist. In today's episode we're going to be handling missing data that has crept into your data sets. Oftentimes as a pandas developer or any developer for that matter working with data you'll be reading in and analyzing real world data that isn't always clean to start with. Now, oftentimes you'll have, again, data sets that have missing values. And this isn't always a problem, but for those times when it is a problem, when it actually has detrimental effects to your analysis, I have presented five methods here that will help you in cleaning your data set, in pre-processing your data set uh, to get ready for analysis. So again, there's a lot of different ways to uh, deal with missing values, but these five methods I find myself using quite frequently, and I think they will be helpful for you as well. So they are is NA, not NA, drop NA, fill NA, and finally interpolate. So let's jump on in over to the code and look at an example of each of these methods. We have returned once again to our Jupyter Lab, and the first thing I'm going to do is run this top cell to import pandas as PD, and we're also going to be importing the random module so that we can use it in a demonstration down below. Uh, this next cell, we're going to be reading in our data that's hosted at this web address. It looks like it's going to be a CSV file. So we're gonna be converting that to a pandas data frame, and this data frame should look very familiar to us. This is what we have been working with throughout the course of this playlist thus far. All right, now this next cell, we're going to be creating some missing values. So this data frame is actually artificial data. Uh, it's all contrived. None of it is real, so it looks very clean. However, in a real world scenario, you'll most likely have missing values within your data frame. So all this cell is doing is just emulating that. We're just going to be randomly creating some missing values in the math score column, uh, as well as these columns in record three. And also we're going to create an entire row that is has missing values for every single column. And that's going to be labeled as record 1000. Awesome, so now let's count up all of the non-null values in each of these uh, columns. So it looks like again, we have some missing values in the race ethnicity, uh, or missing values, yep, in the race ethnicity column, uh, math score column, reading and writing score columns. All right, so let's take a look at our first method. So this method is NA, um, basically is going to tell us where in our data frame is our missing values. So just as a word um, for information, uh, it's important to note that pandas recognizes numpy.nan as the default missing value. So if you recall, when we assigned missing values, we assigned it to uh, the Python none um, uh, data type, right? However, when we did that, pandas automatically converted none to its default missing value, which is numpy.nan. So let's take actually a quick look at that before we proceed. I'm just going to quickly show that in this cell. So here we go. Again, look. This, uh, this value in record three is NAN. That is Panda's way of saying that this is missing. This value is missing. Also, look at this. This is pretty hilarious right here. We have an entire row full of missing values, uh, which are NANs. Awesome, let me now delete that. Cool. So again, is NA is great for filtering for values labeled NAN in your data frame. Again, these are the missing values uh, because is NA returns a series of booleans indicating where missing values are located. And if you recall from our filtering episode, whenever we have a series of boolean values, that means that we can use that as a filter mask. So let me just quickly show you that if you haven't seen that episode on filtering yet, which I would recommend that you do. All right, so here we go. We have our series of booleans. Now we're going to use that filter mask, that series, um, to filter for all of the values in the math score column that has, or that is missing. If I run the cell, here we go. Math score, here's the column right here. As we can see, as we scroll down, all of these values are missing because they are NAN. So now we have all of the records, right, of this data frame where we have missing values for math score. 
Cool, so one more thing before we proceed to the next method. We can also use is null for this exact same operation. Is null is just an alias for is and a. These two methods work the exact same way. In fact, I believe that is null just calls is and a, so they have basically the same performance. Um, whichever one you want to use, that's totally fine. It's just personal preference. As you can see again, yep, this, this returns the same, um, the same data frame as is and a. Cool, now let's move on to the next method. The next method works basically the same exact way, but it just gets the opposite rows, right? So not NA is going to return us that same series of Booleans. However, instead of indicating where there are missing values, where there are NANs, it's going to indicate where there are not missing values. So again, this works the exact same way. Uh, however, it's going to get us all of the rows in our math score column uh, that have, or that have uh, real values, not missing values in our math score column. Awesome. So uh, we, this also has the not null method. Again, whichever one you want to um, define, that is perfectly fine. But I do want to mention one more thing, and that is this method not na uh, performs the same exact way as if you were just to uh, give this filter the not operator, right? Um, so th again, this works the exact same way. Uh, saying not filter as just using uh, not na, right? So not is na is the same thing as not na. It's just whatever you want to, um, whatever, however you want to do it. I personally like not na just because it's a little bit more legible and human readable. All right, let's move on to our next two methods, which are drop na and fill na. So now that we know where our na, uh, where our na values are, our na. Um, records are, what are we going to do about that? So there are two different ways which we could handle those NA values. We could just literally delete the entire record uh, that has that NA, or we could fill that missing value with another value. So let's first look at dropping the value. All right, cool, so if I were to run this cell right here, what that's going to do is it's going to look through the entire data frame. If there is a missing value, which again is a NAN value, then it's going to drop in any like in any of the cells. Then it's going to drop that entire record. Now let's say that we didn't want to drop the entire record. We want to drop the entire column of that wherever there is like an NAN. Instead of dropping the record, we drop the column. Well, we can just specify that when we say axis equals one. Again, one indicates that it is a column. However, if we run the cell right now, it's actually going to not return anything. Because if you recall, this last record uh, with index 1000 has an NA for every single value. Uh, so what this is doing is basically just dropping every single column because every single uh, value in this record is NA. Awesome, let's just take a quick look at some of these other optional arguments. I'm not gonna go through all of them because I think uh, you can uh, do that in your own practicing. Um, but let's look at subset. So if I were to say um, drop NA, However, I only want to look at, say, the math score column, then I could do that, right? I could say subset is equal to, and now I'm going to say math score. Awesome, what, so what this is doing is instead of looking through the entire data frame for NAN values, it's only going to look at the math score column, and if there is a NAN value in the math score column, then it's going to delete the entire uh, record. However, I don't have to look at math score. Let's say I want to look at race or ethnicity. So again, look, there's 949 rows, but if instead I supply this optional argument with race ethnicity, then now this column right here, record three, or I mean this row did not get dropped because there is indeed a genuine value in race ethnicity right here. So it did look like it dropped a couple rows um, but again, this row was not dropped even though there are NAN values because there was a genuine value right here in the race ethnicity column. Awesome, so uh, let's look at how just, um, just because, if we were to say how, uh, right now the default is any, but if I were to specify how equals all, what that's going to do is it's actually going to look for NAN values, right, throughout the entire data frame but it's not going to drop the record unless all of the values in that record are NAN. 
So this record right here, record three, was preserved, but the last record, 1,000, was not because all of the values in that record was missing. All of it was NAN. Let's look at Thresh just because I um, love coding in Pandas so much. If I were to say Thresh, this method, I mean, this optional argument could be somewhat complicated to learn at first, but let's say Thresh equals one. What this is doing is that uh, what we are specifying is that before you drop the column, like let's say that you find, let's say that Pandas finds a missing value before we drop that entire row, first let's check to see if there is at least one value in that row that is genuine. So for instance, this third record, this third record right here, it found an NAN value, but we saw there was at least one value that was real, so we decided not to drop that record. The last row definitely did get dropped because there are no um, values in this row that are real. Uh, but let's take again a look at this row three. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, values in this row, which are real, right? So if I were to say thresh equals eight, yep, looks like this record still exists. But if I were to say now thresh equals nine, which is a pretty high threshold, but if I were to say that, then look, now this record got dropped because there wasn't at least nine values that were not missing in that record. Awesome, so in place, let's just, because this is the last optional uh, argument, uh, let's just go over it. So in place, what that does is that instead of like making a copy of student state frame, that's what we're doing right now, we're making a copy of it and then producing that as the output. If you specify in place equals true, what that's going to do is directly affect this data frame, uh, the, the actual data stored under this variable name, students data frame. Cool. So I would recommend on your own time, try that out and see what that does. Awesome. So let's move on to the next method then, which is fill in a, so instead of just dropping the entire row or column, what we can do if we find an L N N A, what we can do is we can actually fill that value with another value. Cool. So what I'm going to do first here is say, I want to fill all of the missing values with this scalar, this string right here, this value is missing. And I also want to, uh, for these two rows, um, uh, also make those missing. Awesome, so if I were to, oops, and I wanna comment this out for now. Awesome, so if I'm going to run this cell, then it looks like all of the NANs, instead of getting dropped, uh, instead of the rows getting dropped, they actually got filled with what we specified right here. Cool, so this actually might not be the most ideal in every scenario because again, if we were just to blanket fill every single uh, value with say a string, this column right here, math score, you can see that all of these are floats, or at least they used to be floats, right? So if we just specify it as a string, then that could mess up some data analysis, right? You can't really take the average of 72 and this string right here. So maybe a better way of filling values is to use what's known as a method. So let's, uh, there are uh, different methods that you can use, but let me demo one. Uh, let me demo first the forward fill method. Cool, so this forward fill method, what this does is that when we encounter a missing value, then it's going to look backwards. It's going to look at the last uh, non-missing value that we had, and then just forward fill that with uh, throughout the rest of the missing values until we reach a non-missing value again. So again, if you recall, this used to be missing, this used to be missing, this used to be missing. Uh, so what Pandas did here is it took the last non-missing value and just copied that value into all of the, pres or the, the following of uh, values that are missing. So we got 72, 72, 72, 72, and now we have 76 uh, because this, again, this value was not missing. You can do a similar behavior by saying BFill, which stands for backfill. And what that does is that now, uh, when we get missing values, we're just gonna keep moving on until we get the next non-missing value, and then we're going to uh, backfill that, that, that value that's not missing into all of the missing values uh, and just give it the same value. Cool, so that is the backfill and forward fill methods. Um, and then we also have like in place, we can specify a limit. 
Uh, and let me just show you what that does. So if I were to say limit equals one, then it's only going to backfill one time. If I were to say limit equals two, then that's going to say, all right, you have a limit of two backfills, but then after that, stop backfilling. Uh, and so this is just like a way to specify if you have like a limit for how many times you want to backfill or forward fill. Um, that is how you can specify. Cool. So fill in A can work on data frames. It can also work on series itself. So if I were to run this here, uh, we can see that we are filling in the series. Uh, any of the missing values in this column, we're going to just say not specified. And as you can see there, indeed, we have eight values um, that have been filled with not specified. Cool, so the last method that I want to look at before we wrap up this video is interpolate. So I'm actually declaring this as extra credit. You don't uh, technically need to know it. Uh, I don't use it that often, but it is a super cool method. So I decided to include it within this method or this uh, episode. So what interpolate will do is that it will run a procedure known as interpolation to fill the gaps in between data points. So as a reminder, let me just show you what our data frame looks like right now. It has some missing values, NAN, NAN, NAN. But if I were to run the interpolate method on it, watch what happens to these NANs. So now, instead of just being like forward filled or back filled, what it does is it draws basically a line between uh, 72 and 76, and it fills in all of the values um, basically that attach 72 to 76 in a line, right? So it goes, now we are progressing uh, one by one. It goes 72, 73, 74, 75, and then 76. So there's a nice neat line in between 72 and 76. If we were to look at the reading score, we have 72 and 78. So the increment for each uh, su successive value is now 1.5, right? Uh, if we add 1.5 to 72, we get 73 and a half, then 75, then 76 and a half, and then finally 78. Same with the increment from 74 to 75. It looks like we had three gaps to fill. So we just incremented it by 0.25 every single time until we got to 75. So again, that's a pretty neat method. Uh, pretty cool. I'm sure it comes in handy a lot. Um, so this is just a linear interpolation. As you can see, it's just like a... a um, step size that is the exact same, um, but we can actually specify other methods. We can, say, uh, we can say quadratic method, right? We can say cubic method. We can say a polynomial method. Um, so let me just run that, uh, and there we go. It looks like now we have quadratic interpolation in between 72 and 76, uh, which is like 80, 84, 82. Cool, so that's gonna be it for this method. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll see you in the very next episode.